converted from when Atifku Abubakar jumped in in 2019 and picked Obi instead of him. And this was what Werewike said about him. So whatever it is between Umayi and Obi, eh? Why would you drag your own people into it? Dog whistle them. Because, like I said, those of them who were under Bokwari, who witnessed the hatred, the state-sponsored profiling of the Igbos in Nigeria, especially under Bokwari, those of them who were Igbos in the room, I hope one day they will come out and tell us how they were really treated. And yet, eh? They kept on doing all they, all they could to help Bokuari murder many, many young Igbos and make some of them disappear for the record. Listen to this. Hello, viewers. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Hello, the world at large. I am Rita Chinemerem Anyego. I am a lawyer attached in Abakaliki here. I'm practicing here in Abakaliki. Over time, I've seen things happen. Over time, I've had things happen. Over time, I've had cases about a lot of injustice. Innocent people detained for no reason. You know, the worst part of it all is that most people are detained because of campaign. Just yesterday and today, like 30 people are innocent people, not just people, but innocent people are detained for for just campaigning, campaigning for people they care about, campaigning for what they believe. Please release them. And I am tired of this injustice. In fact, literally the entire judiciary is wrapped around politicians. It's wrapped around our executive, which is the David Mezo Mai. For some reason, he has oppressed them. He has tortured them into believing that he's a god, into believing he's a tyrant. And that is why they don't think they can do anything about it. And now most of them can do nothing but just give an unjust ruling about things and still let it go. Please, if no one else can hear me or do something about this, I am calling on the entire multiverse to help us. Ebony people are crying for help. Ebony people are dying. Ebubago torture and kill someone just for political purposes. No crime committed. Actually, as I'm speaking to you, Linus, Chief Linus is in prison now with mocked up charges. Everybody knows his mocked up char charges, but because he thinks he's a political, uh, 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 a political opponent, you decided, or for some reason, you decided to, to arrest him and detain him for no reason. They are now using judiciary against us. We are the poor citizens. We should be the judiciary is the last hope of common man. Where else do we think we can run to if not to the judiciary? Now, judiciary has been politically subjected to weird things, to weird judgments. If you think you can appeal, where else do you appeal? To God, if not Supreme Court? But to weird judgments. If you think you can appeal, where else do you appeal? To God, if not Supreme Court? But still, the same Supreme Court, they have proven to us that we have lost our trust in them. These are the only places we can go and find justice. Fundamental rights, you cannot apply for fundamental rights in Ebony State and get justice. This is a living witness. I have, I have applied for fundamental rights on children, children of a, poli a retired police officer who were badly battered by police command of Ebony State. And guess what I got as a judgment? Uh, tell them not to stand up again. They might be shot to death. A judge gave me this as a ruling in a fundamental suit. Ask any lawyer from Ebony State. They will tell you they don't fight for, they, you cannot fight fundamental suits in a, in a high court in Ebony State now. You know how it is. If you think you can get small justice, it's only in federal high court. We are tired. We need justice back. We need people to speak up for us. They are killing us. We are remaining but few. How then do we expect to train children in this, in this, in this, in this, conduciveness because mm. that's what they think it is mm. we're not it's not conducive for anyone kids are coming up they expect us to grow we are not growing we are dying please we need help tell david omahe to debug a bubago there is nothing like a bubago there are mostly thoughts which i know a lot of them which i was able to bail from prison they don't know the law why then arm them an untrained 
sets of criminals, on trade sets of people, you arm them to be law enforcement agents. What law are you enforcing when you barely know the law? Mm. And now, they, 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 they even went to the extent of making our former government house a tortured zone. <laughs> government house, right opposite the high court. The other day, I saw police officers standing right opposite our high court, searching children, telling them to bring out their phones in front of court. These are, these are crimes that ordinarily children had in myth which happened during slavery. The right opposite our high court, searching children, telling them to bring out their phones in front of court. These are, these are crimes that ordinarily children had in myth which happened during slavery. These are our constant order of the day. These are things we feel. I am agitated because I'm tired. I'm a youth. I'm obedient. And I'm tired of this situation. And this is why I need change. I need change. And this change starts with the ability to choose. So please, let's choose. Let's choose. Let us choose. Then on the point of choosing, we will know which one we decided to choose for. You cannot impose APC on us. You cannot insist that Mwifuru becomes the next governor. We have people who have bought our belief, who, are, who have made us feel comfortable, who have made us feel that there is still someone out there who can help us. And we are ready. We are ready at any point in time. We are ready to do what it takes for, for pro a professor who knows our plight to become the next governor. Do what it takes. Sir David Mwezo, man, you don't know what I go through. You seized my, you seized my entitlement for law school. These are things, I, I, you don't know me, but you have killed me. To a great extent, you have dealt with me. And I will go to any length for you to see what you have done to me. And this is it. I'm ready to choose now. And you can't force, you can't force Mwifuru on me. Mwifuru is my junior in every way. He's my junior. And he should come with his results. I come with, his, with, with, with my results. Let's do it openly. It's a face-to-face -face combat. I challenge you. You think you have what it takes. Bring out your next contestant. I bring out my next contestant. You have upheld me through. At every point in time, I uphold Professor Bernard Odo. Because he is, he is much more of a man than all of you put together. If you think you're a man, do it properly. Don't come oppressing us from choosing. Compelling us to, 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 to vote for your candidate would not make the court. Make changes. This was one of the videos of the cries for help, the cry for help from some of the young people in the boy. They were using the Bubiago to hunt down young Igbos, especially in the boy states, under that devil. And they were accusing them of being, oh, they are, I mean, high POB, oh, ESN, and they were killing them. Innocent people, children, like he just mentioned. All because he wanted to have a seat at the table. The seat which earned him ministerial slots. Why should you, why? Why would you even want to, like, uh, bring your people into this? I keep asking that, oh. This young man has something to say. I want you to listen. Caesar, I'm extremely disappointed at David Omai. Um, those are the kinds of statements I don't expect to hear from a senior government official. And, you know, he's a man I, I tend to respect, you know, because he's, he's a hardworking individual. And, you know, he, he knows his onions when he comes um, to engineering and, and Ministry of Works and Roads Constructions and things like that. So I have a lot of respect for him. Um, but particularly, I was I felt offended by that statement because I've said it on this program severally. I detest the dog whistling of an entire ethnic group in Nigeria. And let's call a spade what it is. It's becoming one too many that we want to consistently and continuously scapegoat the Igbo ethnic tribe in Nigeria and it's unacceptable. It is unacceptable because there is a history of violence targeted at that group since 1953 in our country. Listen, Caesar, 
a meeting was held in Lagos, not, not necessarily a meeting, in, in Parliament. Anthony and Nahuru moved a motion uh, for the independence of Nigeria. The North opposed that motion, and at the train station, when they were going back yeah. to their constituency, yeah. um, they met a crowd that was essentially mocking them. They got back to the North. Chief Akintola led a, a tour across the North, you know, to campaign essentially for the independence, to rally the North in support of, of Nigeria in, independence. Guess what happened after that? Riots broke out in northern parts of Nigeria, particularly in Kano, where over 240 Igbos were massacred. Were they the ones that demanded for Nigeria to have an independence at that time? In 1966, particularly in May, yeah. months before the Civil War happened, thousands of them were massacred across northern cities, and they had to flee to the east for safety because thousands of them were indiscriminately killed for what they knew nothing about right so let's not even talk about the civil war and the hundreds of thousands that were massacred and the fact that after 1970 this entire ethnic group had to start from the scratch again to begin to build their lives and see that look at what they have done since 1970 a group that left or started from nothing went to Bauchi, went to kanu went to meduguri went to akure went to Ogun State and look what they have built in 40 years of hard work, grit and no support from the federal government. Look what they have done for themselves. But what we consistently and continuously do is to, is to signal hate, hatred and violence against the group. And this thing has to stop. We can't continue a country. Listen, if you don't want a group of people to be a part, let them go then. I, I don't understand this. Every turn, there has to be an excuse to single out an ethnic group. I give you a typical example, just like the past elections. I heard people telling, uh, how can how can the, the uh, OB, for instance, have scored ninety eight percent in certain states to the north? How can he have scored ninety eight percent? Muhammad Buhari, under a PDP led federal government, scored over ninety percent votes in four northern states. Go and check the results in Katina. Go and check the results in Bauchi. Go and check the results in Chigawa. He scored over 90% in those states under the leadership of the PDP as a federal government. So it was okay for Buhari to score over 90% in his own core constituency, but something utterly went wrong when Obi did it in the Southeast. This ethnic group have always been part of a nationalist political party and never really have ever built a regional movement. All the times they have supported a political party have been national political parties right from the NCNC. Yeah. They have a stakeholder in the PDP. They don't have a regional party in the sense that we had ACN in the in 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 in, in the southwest. In the sense that they had AMPP in the north. They did not have the the, the behemoth of a regional political party. So where is all this hate coming from? Where is all this hate coming from? They tell you now, for instance, that they have a rabid mob who are harassing people on the internet because their candidate lost. We have very short memories. In two thousand and eleven. A candidate lost in this country, and over 800 people were massacred in violence in the north. I so know this because I personally saved 11 core members and were hidden in my father's hotel in Kano. What, so what are we saying? 800 people were massacred because of the ambition of somebody in this country. And suddenly we are losing our minds because we are saying people are, uh, are, 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 are insulting you online. And they are, so they are a rabid mob. Let us stop this. Let us stop this ethnic dog whistling. Let us stop this ethnic baiting. And this thing should not continue. We are one people, one country. Caesar. Don't say that one. We are not one people, one country. So you will say the last one. But you've spoken so well. You heard him. Historically, I have told you this before as well. Okay? Whenever the ruiners, the criminals in charge of Nigeria, eh? whenever they look for who to blame eh? for their failure, for their own incompetence and corruption, just blame the ego. How many of you remember that? That it is like an unwritten code in Nigeria. Eh? How many of you remember that? That is Igbo profiling. And I was saying that, I, I told you then, I said, saying it is not because Igbos need anybody's pity. It is just to open the eye of so many of you 
eh, of what it is to have a systemic cold war in your country against uh, an ethnic nationality. In this instance, the Igbos. So they don't need our pity. One thing you should remember is this. Those who chose to go for the Igbos, they will come for every one of you because it is not just that the Igbos they are coming for. They just make the Igbos like a national project on written code. Eh? If you have no idea what is wrong with Nigeria, just blame the Igbo. It's so easy. But when you ask them, majority of them, to tell you why they so much have this generational hatred towards the Igbos, they will have no real thing to say other than they are people. There are people are always, and when you ask some of them, how many Igbos have you really encountered that one-on-one -on -one relationship with in your life? Probably none. But they have been conditioned to be like that. Among the people that destroyed Nigeria, the Yorubas, the Awusas, the Fulanese, the Ijos, the rest of all, you know, all those ones who have had a shot at the government of Nigeria. Nobody is even asking them to build bridges. Only the Igbos are told to build bridges. Bridges with who? Okorocha built bridges, built, uh, became Julius Badger. Last, last, he even spoke Arabic. It all, it all came back to nothing. Because from those of you who know the history of Nigeria now, especially those of you who have followed the history on this platform, you, are, you shouldn't be so surprised when they came for uh, the communists. I look away because I'm not a communist. They came for the socialist. Well, I'm not a socialist, so I looked away. And they came for the Jews. Oh, fair enough, I'm, I'm not a Jew. I watched them kill them. So I'm spared. Then they came for the Christians. So, well, thank God I do if I'm not a Christian. Then they came for the Muslims. So oh, fair enough, I'm not a Muslim. So I'm spared. Then they came for the atheists. So well, I'm not atheist, so I'm spared. Then they came for me. And there was nobody to speak for me. And that is why I kept saying it on this platform. Do not inherit any of their enemies. Do not get drowned into their, or get drowned in their war. Because if you look at everything from day one, that is wrong with that contraption. It has always been the politicians and the politics. The politics of Azikiwe, Awolowo, Amadu Belo, Tafa Balewa, and the British, you all have heard the story. All of that led us to this one. And out of 63 years of Nigeria independence, the Northern Nigeria has ruled for 47 years of that. Well, the southern Nigeria, and I've had about 16 years too. When I say southern Nigeria minus the Igbos. But guess what? For all of the northerners who destroyed Nigeria and the southerners who also helped them destroy Nigeria for that 63 years, it is only the Igbos that need to build bridges. Yet they want to leave. A lot of you have forgotten that you actually had to fight war, commit genocide, to force them to remain in Nigeria. As well as all the politics that followed, the partitioning of Eastern Nigeria, yeah. 
the political creation of a place called the South South and the never ending, well, implant, well implanted ethnic division, brothers versus brothers from the old Eastern region. And why we are where we are. You fought war, you committed genocide to keep them in Nigeria. They were living. Nigeria was not fighting to keep the South South people. They were fighting to keep the entire place. That's what they did. The men that committed all of this came back together. For those who survived, they were here together in their old age. They even grew old. Ojuku grew very old before he died. Awulowo was very old before he died. Gowon is currently shaking and vibrating because he's also very old. Nigeria failed to acknowledge this genocide. Those who committed the genocide were rewarded. Some of them became president afterward. So they said, no winner, no vanquish. And the wound was partially covered, but never healed. Devulumayi. Devulumayi is probably a teenager when that war of attrition broke out. It should be, he is not just a child of history. He actually lived through history himself. But for his own political selfishness, he decided to be the one to use the political comments of people like him. Obi is like him because Obi is also a politician inside Nigeria. To throw your entire, entire tribe under the bus. That is very low. Even for Devulumai. I'm not surprised. I will be surprised if those of you are really educated. Yoruba, Usa, Igbo, or what are, we, what are you? Are also very much invested in this. Since somehow, somehow, it could be appealing to your bigotry. Now that everybody is actually living a lie in that country, okay? where the government is sponsoring the media or sponsoring people on social media to go tell the people that uh, <laughs> this one is sad though but make i show you something the government that is telling you that they want to uh, generate employment attract investors have chosen to start uh, a scam a fraud called the coastal highway that they have no real plan of building. I have said this and I will remind you whether it's going to be another four years or another 10 years. I will be here to remind you. They have no plan of constructing anything. It is a pure land grab using the federal might. But before I show you this, right? I'm going to, before I show you this, I want you to listen to this. Somebody actually told Devulumai at the meeting where he organized to make himself feel better, but decided to now turn it into a tribal or ethnic dog whistle. They don't even get any land to claim because they show sure that they said they have a map. According to this man, it's long gone. Watch this. Already. And where you are calling uh, Costa Way, you are not in Costa Way. You can check it on your system. Where you are putting your uh, your your alignment now is on top of the sea of, of uh, Okwanja. It's not the what you are looking for. If you are looking for your coastal way, it's inside the ocean already. Yes. When we are calling by uh, more than thirty years now for the federal government to come and claim the land for us, the coastal, you people did not come to do that. Yes. Now our own community, do you want to be claiming it's the ocean? Uh, the ocean moved there. Eh? Yes. Uh, the ocean is there. If you want to do, I know. Sorry. If you want to claim anything ocean, it's inside the ocean already. Yes! This guy, own, you correct. Our own community you will claim it's the ocean. It's now your own. They put up a show to make it look like the landmark guy was trying to blackmail them. The purpose is to grab the land and they have successfully grabbed that. Okay, and it won't be the first time. The people of uh, Etiosa, Etiosa, local government, do you remember that land that Ifnubu took from you in year 2000 that was meant to be used for a general hospital? 
in Etiosa. I don't know how many hectares of land, but it was really massive. You remember that? To, I mean, do you remember? Now, by the end of uh, 2005, Tifnumbu did not erect a single structure, even a gate man, I mean, sorry, security post on the land. The next thing the people of Etiosa will see was that uh, a bank was selling the land. I mean, some of you, if you, if you are in Lagos in 2006, 2007, Isaleko Barack Obama, Ajangba Di Albert Einstein, Fashola, hmm? was uh, he actually shared the experience on one of uh, the TV program I watched way back then. Okay, but I I witnessed the event too. Because what happened before they knew it? Eh? They said uh, they said Lagos State 